Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Danny with Modern Mead Maker, and as usual, a big shout out to all the new subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. Um, it just lets me know that I'm doing something that you find interesting. Uh, I do have a request for you, uh, and that is if you have any questions, comments, uh, then post them below, or even suggestions. Um, what do you want to see? What kind of content? Uh, are you feeling a little gray on so you don't fully understand or you've never heard of and you just want to see someone walk through the process with it? What we're going to do today is strawberry melomel. If you follow me on my Facebook page uh, or even my Twitter or Patreon, then you'll see that I've posted uh, that it's strawberry melomel time. I picked 39 and a half pounds of strawberries, split that with my wife. So we're gonna make a small batch of strawberry melomel. For that recipe, I am using Premier Cuvée, which is a Red Star yeast, uh, five grams per gallon. So again, a four gallon batch, so that's 20 grams of that yeast. Rehydrated with uh, Gofirm at 25 grams of Gofirm. 500 milliliters of super hot water to help dissolve that go firm uh, and then I actually just did that uh, off camera as I started my yeast in the other room so that we don't have that constant noise going click 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 so what I did off camera yesterday as well was I poured one gallon of water into a five gallon bucket I added 12 pounds of strawberries to that inside of a super fine mesh bag and two ounces of cocoa nibs and the point behind that was to kind of start extracting some of the sugars from the strawberry um, and letting those cocoa nibs as well kind of extract some of their flavor into that um, I was going to ferment in a five gallon bucket but as you could probably quickly imagine uh, one gallon of water with 12 pounds of strawberry uh, it displaces, displaces like quite a bit of volume so in that five gallon bucket with only a gallon of water I have about two and a half gallons of water space left which isn't going to leave me much actual meat on the back side so uh, I dusted off the fermenter cleaned it all up and, and I'm going to ferment in that probably about four gallon batch so, and if you haven't checked it out, make sure you check out the ball valve cleaning video uh, that I just posted that talks about how to disassemble and clean that so you can help prevent uh, infections or just crazy off smells. So what I did with my strawberries, because they were fresh picked from a local farm, uh, they don't spray anything on their strawberries. So what I ended up doing was taking all 40 pounds of that, or 39 and a half pounds, chopping the tops off, leaving as much fruit as possible, um, and then rinsing them, of course, because they have dirt and all those other things on them. And then I, not necessarily required to, but I gave them a potassium metabisulfite and sorbate bath. So I filled up a five gallon bucket with strawberries, um, and then I poured five gallons of water over them uh, that had the sorbate and the sulfide in it so that kill off any yeast or craziness that might be going on and I just kind of did that a few times uh, back and forth in between the strawberry bucket and the cleaner bucket if you will uh, to help kind of just kill that off once I did that um, I took them off I diced them up probably in about quarters and then froze them uh, and I measured them all out so I had four to 4.03 pounds uh, per bag so that you know have an even measurement. So they were frozen for about a week because I didn't, as you saw, I didn't post a video last week. Um, pulled them out of the freezer, thawed them out, threw them in a mesh bag, and that's where we're at right now. So I'm gonna add my strawberries, the liquid, and the cocoa nibs that are in my five gallon bucket to my fast fermenter. I'm gonna get a specific gravity reading uh, just to kind of see where I'm at. And then I'm gonna add some honey afterwards 
to bring me up to where I need to be and top back off with water to get my final volume. I also have uh, another 12 pounds of strawberries that I will be adding in secondary uh, as well and then I'll taste it to determine if I want a little bit more cocoa nib flavor or chocolate flavor. All right, so let's get doing this. Um, I'm going to, like I said, pour this in here and then we'll, we'll go from there. So what I also did was added, um, because it's 12 pounds, I added pectic enzyme to the water when I added my strawberries, which was one and a half teaspoons. Um, and that's because it's one tenth or yeah one tenth of a teaspoon per pound of fruit uh, which was 12 pounds which is over a, pound, a teaspoon so I went a little over again because strawberries one like to leave a huge amount of protein haze or pectic haze um, and I wanted to reduce that and that's also why I put it in a fine mesh bag uh, to help try and keep some of that stuff in there Granted, when I go to pull it out of this thing, it's going to squeeze some in there anyways, but hopefully not nearly as much. Um, what you didn't see me do is squeeze that big old bag into this uh, fast fermenter, and it's just made a huge mess. But I got the majority of it in there. I'm going to pour the strawberry juice and the cocoa nibs in now. I don't know if you ever had like a strawberry pie or like open like some candied strawberries from like a fruit a pie filling. That is what that smells like. Makes me super freaking hungry. Um, but yeah, so let's take a specific gravity reading. So according to the USDA's website, uh, they have almost every, if not every fruit and vegetable uh, and even peanuts and all kinds of things listed out on their website uh, and it, it talks about their nutritional value um, and strawberries of course are on there and they talked about even canned strawberries in syrup canned strawberries without uh, and water all kinds of things so or fresh hand-picked strawberries and they break down the average um, sugar content so based on that information we can plug it into a batch builder um, with a guesstimate of known sugar per pound gallon or whatever right so 12 pounds of strawberries and two gallons of water is not going to give us a very high specific gravity reading so um, what I've done is I pulled a sample and I would call that 1.012 so 10, 12, um, which is nothing. It's barely over 1% of alcohol. Obviously, we're gonna add honey, and then we're gonna add more strawberries on the backside for flavor and color. Uh, but um, that's the nice color, it's a nice rosé color. So what I wanted to also discuss is pH. Um, a lot of people talk about it, a lot of people are concerned about it. There are absolutely some just reasons to be concerned about your pH, um, especially if you use tap water like I do. So when I first started making mead, my I've tested all my stuff. The alkalinity, the chlorine, the chloramide, the pH, the everything. Like I had it tested, so I knew the water profile for my city water where I'm at. And it was pretty good ranges, so I didn't have to tweak it or anything. Um, as I've gone through in about the last year, uh, I started noticing some issues. Um, either the city has done something with the water, or maybe it's just hardness buildup in the pipes over, I mean, this house is like 10 years old. Um, my pH has gone up. So I went from like a 6.4 to like an 8.2. Uh, so obviously that changes things because I'm expecting to hit an average pH based off of the honey that I'm using, the fruits, uh, all of these things. I'm, you know, I know if I had a six and I add all these things together at 
I can get it down to about a five and I'm good to go uh, by the time fermentation starts. Well, obviously if I'm at an 8.3 and I do that, I'm only knocking it down maybe to six. So I'm still neutral, but I need to be lower for optimal uh, yeast production or fermentation. So what I started doing instead of buying jugs of water and all that other stuff because why uh, I got a product called pH stable or I think it's p5 stable but basically you add this stuff at uh, about 3.1 grams per gallon so what I ended up doing was adding that to at a 3.1 grams per gallon ratio to my water so that I can have a good standard pH now I just took my pH reading using a digital uh, pH meter that I calibrated and I am at 4.33 so right where I need to be but that's enough about that back to where we were at um, so two, 12 pounds of strawberry 2 ounces of cocoa nibs pH stabilizer peptic enzyme and one potassium metabisulfite tablet when I added the strawberries to the five gallon batch yesterday because I have strawberries in a bag in there uh, I can't really get in there with my least stirrer and mix the crap out of my honey so I'm doing that in a five gallon bucket food grade of course with a gallon of tap hot tap water all right gallon of water five pounds of honey all mixed up um, I'm not worried about the temperature because this is again hot water tap and then this is like 60 degrees so it'll balance out uh, so that when I do pitch my yeast it'll be easier to attemperate and a lot faster uh, I added a little bit more honey and my fourth gallon of water which gives me a total volume of six and a quarter gallons the specific gravity gives me around six and a half percent which is perfect um, by the time by the time the residual water in the strawberries or sugar comes out um, It'll, it'll balance each other out. So we'll be sitting, I think, pretty good at 6.5%. So let's talk yeast real quick. I mentioned it earlier. Um, I'm using Red Star Premier Cuvée. Uh, five grams of that per gallon. Um, so that's done. I'm going to atemperate here in a minute. Okay, so got my yeast. Um, the temperature of this is 87.7 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the must seventy nine point one. So we're within so we're within the ten uh, degrees of each other. But what I'm going to do is I'm still going to attemperate my yeast um, with the sample that I pulled off for specific gravity readings. Um, I had 500 milliliters in here prior to adding the must, so uh, now I have 600 milliliters, 600 and like five. Um, I'm gonna put that back on my stir plate for 10 minutes, just kind of get the yeast even more happy, uh, and then I'm just gonna pitch it, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so yeast has been added to the fermentation. We're at six and a half percent, which is about what I wanted. Uh, it won't be too alcoholic flavor, um, but it'll be a nice drink, I believe, at the end. Um, cocoa nibs, 12 pounds of strawberries up front. Um, with a hopeful secondary rack of at least three and a half gallons. Um, and then once that's stabilized, I will add more strawberries uh, and cocoa nibs to flavor, basically. And then... I will rack one more time from that and then 
hopefully bottle. But again, like all of my other videos, I will continually have you come along with me uh, to see what I'm doing, how I do it, uh, to offer my point of view as well as take advice from y'all. So with that being said, um, and to kind of go back on what I said, mentioned earlier about pH readings, um, now that everything is done, it's been mixed together real well, uh, I want to take a final pH reading prior to really the start of fermentation to kind of see where I'm at. So let's go do that. Still 4.33, uh, which goes to show you that that pH stabilizer that I used up front really, really does the job. See, 4.38, you know, give or take because it's it's moving around, but I mean, that's, that's perfect. So that's going to lock in my pH right there. So I should be able to maintain that through the whole fermentation, which I'm hoping for a week or less. Um, I will track that fermentation on the graph just like I do uh, normally and my pH ranges. So, so again, if you don't follow me on Twitter or Facebook or you are not a Patreon supporter, um, then you won't get to see all of that behind the scenes extra data. You'll just see the videos, which is fine. Um, if you are a Patreon member, then you get to see the videos before anyone else does. Um, and then followed up with the regular subscribers. So if you're interested in some merch like the shirt, uh, let me know. Comment in the comments below. Message me on Facebook or send me a tweet. Uh, all of those handles are located inside the description as well as the recipe for this movie. So until next time, I'm Danny with Modern Mead Maker and I'll talk to you later.